is now the time. Go ahead. Lucina. Yeah. It's well? Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you? I hope that you are fine. We're going to start this session that it's a workshop. We are going to have like a 20 minutes of presentation with people here and also remote. So we are going to be in two different stations, but together. <laughs> and then we are going to do like a different discussions by groups or we can discuss together. But the idea is to make this a part of being and sharing different reflections about the past, the present, and the future of climate and sustainability organizing in the Wikimedia movement. Yes, so please feel free to ask, to answer, and to share. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, nice. Now I'm seeing myself double. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, hey, everyone. Like, I, I saw some familiar bats. <laughs> They're going through the room. So um, I hope that you're all having a great time there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we'll go ahead and kick this off. Um, and I hope that you're seeing my screen now. Yes. You see my screen there? Yes. Great, amazing. Um, so um, how this session is going to run, um, we are going to be sharing some examples, Vicina and I, from the Spanish-speaking Latin region. And then we have Ruby, who is there in person, and Euphemia, who is here online with me, share some examples from the Africa region. But then the idea is that we'll have a Mentimeter, so have your phones ready when that appears on screen so you can participate there. And then we'll go into the uh, group discussions. And for those of you who are uh, joining online, we don't have breakout rooms. So the way breakout rooms. Uh, so the way that we'll do this is that uh, you'll have access to my slide deck, and you'll be able to participate directly on the slide deck for the group discussion, uh, sharing some ideas and thoughts like written uh, there on the slideshow. Um, and so that's how the session is going to get run. And of course, for those of you that are in person, you'll be able to participate in, in groups in the discussion. So with that said, um, now you should be seeing my full screen. As, and as Rizina said, this is past, present, and future of climate and sustainability organizing in the Wikimedia movement. This is just an excuse to have a conversation about what it, all of you are doing. Uh, on this topic, because we know that there's a lot of like climate and sustainability organizing in the Wikimedia movement right now. Um, and so we're going to share a few examples from across the world. We're going to start with a uh, Spanish speaking Latin American region. Um, and so one uh, thing that we want to tell you um, is that in 2022, uh, Wikimedia affiliates from Spanish speaking Latin America have been collaborating to put together the Wiki for Human Rights campaign. Uh, and in 2023, we gave a very interesting step forward, uh, which was forming a working group on climate justice and Wikimedia projects. And the idea of, uh, behind this group was that the campaign in itself was not enough um, to organize on the topic of climate and sustainability, that we needed more time and that we needed uh, to put a few more efforts and a few more initiatives throughout the year. And this is how the working group was formed. And now Lucina will share some numbers from this year's campaign. Yes, well, we have first the uh, photography contest. Uh, great, thank you, Scan. <laughs> uh, we have seven winning photos. Uh, more than 100 images received and different countries for the region participated in this particular photography contest. Uh, we have Argentina, Colombia, Chile, Bol Bolivia, Peru, and Uruguay. And also we have more than 91 participants from the region and also not from Latin America and the Caribbean, but also participate in this particular contest about these topics. They also beyond this particular uh, photography contest, we also did the 
Wiki for Human Rights campaign in Wikipedia, as we have been doing since a lot of time. And we have more than 900 articles edited, uh, more than 100 articles were quality articles created and improved, and we have more than 1,000 references added to these articles. And something that we want to focus is that these articles were, as all you know, uh, written in real time, updating information about each context, and also related in particular with uh, conflicts, local conflicts, social conflicts, environmental conflicts that are part of the reality of each context. And now I'm going to tell you about another initiative that we had as the working group during this campaign, which was the Digital Green Skills in Wikimedia Projects. And this was an online course plus a professional development uh, plan. Uh, it was basically a course that we designed with the working group and we had the support of the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I saw that Brisa is there in the audience. She can also like <laughs> tell a little bit more about that. Um, and the Inter-American Development Bank. And it was a very interesting learning process that took place in two different stages. We had people participating on Wikilearn, but also on the communities of practice. Um, people were able to choose which project they wanted to focus on while they were doing the, the course. So they had the option to go to Wikimedia Commons uh, to learn more about Wikipedia or to learn more about Wikidata. And then we facilitated like the conversation and their participation on the Wiki Project Climate Change, uh, which you see there as Wiki Proyecto Cambio Climatico because it's in Spanish. And of course, they were also able to engage with the regional Wiki for Human Rights campaign while they were doing the course. Um, so here are some numbers. We had five weeks of uh, online classes. We did a five webinars plus four hours with the community. Um, we engaged in three Wikimedia projects, and then we had this professional development plan uh, program. Sorry, that um, was to select interns to um, help organizing in the climate and sustainability space in different affiliates across the region. So right now, Wikimedia Argentina, Wikimedia de la Universidad de la Plata, Wikimedia Chile, uh, Wikimedia Bolivia, Wikimedia de Uruguay, and Wikimedia Colombia and Fundación Apropedia, which is another ally, ally that we have in the region, are currently working with interns that are, are helping them organize activities in the, climate, um, and in the climate and sustainability space. And the course also included people uh, presenting project proposals. So for them to be able to get selected to the internship, they needed to present a project proposal. And so 32 people completed their project proposals and we had in total 164 students. And it was super interesting after we ran this course and we're still doing the professional um, development plan, uh, program, sorry. Uh, but after we did the course, we had a conversation with the rest of the working group. And we found that this was a key strategy to engage with more people because doing it during the campaign allowed us to give more visibility to the activities that were taking place during the campaign. It attracted new participants with new contributions and perspectives, and it also, and, and it also allowed new participants to see a Wikimedia movement in action. They saw organizations uh, doing things, they saw volunteers in action, uh, editing articles, uploading photos, uh, participating in a lot of activities. So in a way, we were able to show the strength of our movement in action. So those are um, some of the insights that we wanted to share with all of you. And hopefully you won't be able to um, understand a lot of this like, video that I'm going to share right now. Sobre los que <laughs> but um, it, it's kind of like need to see um, this um, little video that uh, Wikimedia de Bolivia did uh, with a capybara that goes into Wikipedia. Uh, Timmy Capybara, the little Timmy Capybara, goes to Wikipedia to learn more about climate change and explain um, climate change to their parents, the Capybara family. <laughs> uh, so little Timmy Capybara family. 
And I thought this was like a nice video to show you some of the stuff that we are doing uh, in the region. Um, and now I'll hand it over to uh, Ruby, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, one last thing. Uh, we're gonna be um, gathering again together at the um, conference around climate justice, indigenous voices, and Wikimedia platforms that will take place in Huaraz, in Peru, uh, in November. Um, so if you wanna learn more, there's a QR code for that. Um, scholarships have already closed and we're finishing wrapping up some details for the program, but if uh, you're interested to learn more about the outcomes uh, of that conference, that's the link that you should follow. And now I'll hand it over to Ruby. You, I have the presentation if you want. Come, come. You can. I, I stay here to help you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I couldn't get enough time to pre prepare a proper presentation, but I hope to share something um, from the Africa community. So over the past two years, I've been the Africa Regional Coordinator for Anglophone um, Africa Wiki for Human Rights, and it's been a wonderful experience. So where's the next slide? Don't worry, the okay. scan is going to change. Okay, good. So what have we learned over the years? So just before I get into this, I just also want to share that the campaigns are still ongoing. A lot of communities are not yet done, so we don't have um, a collective statistics yet. But there are some things that we've learned over the past. Um, one of the things that has really helped us is having um, regional meetings, because those are places where we understand our challenges, because climate change is such a big big topic, but climate change impacts dif are different from communities to communities. So this year we had a regional meeting to discuss um, what is most pressing for us as Africans in terms of climate change and what kind of topics do we want to document about? And then also what kind of strategies um, can we implement in this year's campaign? And one of the strategies that came up in this year's Africa Regional Coordination um, was having country coordinators because um, I think last year we didn't have country coordinators so there were a lot of overlaps and different groups were applying for different grants so it was a whole lot of thing but this year having the country coordinators actually helped uh, collaborative projects which was really good. Um, we had um, we had regional co country coordinators for each of the countries coordinating uh, activity, activities in various parts of the region. And we also um, focused this year on Wiki Voyage. It's such a new project, especially in Africa. I know Wiki Voyage has been in the system for the past years, but for us as Africans, it's something that we are getting to learn. And we had a lot of people showing interest in the Wiki Voyage, which was really cool. Um, again, um, capacity building was also one of the key areas because um, it's such an important thing for us as Africans. And having to participate in the um, organizers lab was also very good. So the campaign, the, the Alex and his team did so well to provide us with so much uh, capacity building opportunities where we coordinated African communities to participate in those campaigns, which really was impactful. So what, what have we learned um, in the past years? So many things. Um, yeah, so we still seeing that environmental topic is such a crucial one. Um, I, it's actually a crucial one, but we see a lot of people showing so much interest from the African community. And um, engaging community on exercise to identify topics of interest was also very um, a useful exercise. And the country coordination was also a very useful exercise. One thing that we're also seeing now as the campaign unfolds is that um, sometimes when campaigns are pegged with high prize award, we don't tend to get quality uh, articles, which we are having so much challenges in, in especially in Nigeria, where there's such, uh, I've ha been having conversations with the community, but Nigeria particularly is having that kind of challenge. And sometimes people don't know what to write about, so having to support them with uh, article lists and stuff like that is also really helpful because it's such a broad topic. Um, yeah, so let me not talk too much. Um, some of, I want to share um, what the topic areas that Africans were really interested in when we had a poll. Um, so this was what they were kind of interested in. When we looked at 
collectively from different countries, pollution seems to be like a very serious topic for them because like if you look at Africa, there's so much pollution because of plastic waste and everything is bagged in plastic, bottles, bottle water. You see all of those things a lot. So it wasn't surprising that people are actually seeing that as a big challenge for them. And the heat waves, um, global heat waves was also something that um, was really talked about because it looks like our temperatures really went high from the beginning of the year. Like it, if it's sunny, it's really hot, hotter than usual. So I think it was also a challenge. We, we saw even in the news how other places are also going through that same thing, like having people having to die just because of um, heat. So it's also like something that is happening in African communities as well. And those other topics were also um, identified. So this was like just a brief statistics from the votes that were cast. Yeah, so not... I didn't really prepare, but just it's just like a snapshot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ruby. And uh, now we'll uh, hand it over to Euphemia, who is online with me here. Thanks, Ruby. Uh, thank you so much, Ruby, and uh, to you, Evelyn. I wanted to really share some of the ways that the African community has evolved as a result of participating in the campaign over um, the last year. Just we heard from the community that it was important to gain impact and participation. We adopted a new strategy for the campaign called the Regional Coordination Approach, where we centered um, community ambassadors or coordinators to help us understand what was crucial for their regions to uh, bring to the core on the topic. And because of this, we saw um, a lot of ways that the African community approached participation. One of the things we saw was the different ways that they found to contribute to the content. In Africa, they started looking at what was really important for them to bridge in terms of knowledge gap. And because of this, um, they shifted from a bit of keeping their contribution the dictionary because they were trying to look at how they would better tell stories of climate change to people who uh, speak um, their languages and to uh, local populations who would not really understand these conversations in the technical terms that we use for climate change and sustainability. So we saw a lot of um, translations of about 500 um, um, climate related words into African languages, particularly those languages that have low representation um, on dictionary, um, including um, the Temazic language, the Shawi, um, Igbo and Swahili. But beyond um, even making sure that this content is available for people who would need, it was also about the comedians learning how to um, communicate about this in their language. For Wikimedians, uh, they wanted to really understand what it would really be for people to understand how to um, talk about technical terms like deforestation, for example, or even global warming in their own language. And it wasn't just about uh, documenting these terms, it was also about bringing the native pronunciation of these terms in these different languages where they were being documented. Other than also finding new ways of contributing to the campaign, the region also um, found new ways of coming together to ensure that they find the best approaches to document the knowledge. So we saw a lot of interregional collaborations between the French speaking and English Africa that was led by Ruby and Valentin. Um, from the IRC Congo. We also saw the Portuguese speaking Latin America and Africa coming together where we saw for the very first time countries such as Brazil, um, Portugal, Mozambique, and um, Angola coming together to explore ways to collaborate on the time and bringing content on the topic. We also saw North Africa and America also collaborating where we saw countries like 
Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, and uh, Canada are coming together to also uh, contribute to the topic. Uh, beyond this regional, interregional collaborations, something else that was really interesting was also how regional coordinators and local organizers were able to connect their interests to activities that helped to promote the campaign. We saw um, a, a, a local organizer, Romeo, who was really uh, passionate about podcasting, bringing a community podcast to help people to spotlight some of the ways that we are uh, conceiving and conceiving ideas and implementing this campaign in their communities or region and sharing that with the world. We also saw our um, regional coordinator, Amin, who is a lover of music and culture, used promotional videos to invite his region and his community to participate uh, in the campaign. We also saw a growing number of talk shows where people took to climate storytelling in different uh, ways to ensure that not just the movement is aware of um, what is happening around the campaign, but also people who are from outside the movement. And there was also the Wiki Green conference, conference that happened in Ghana that provides a platform for discourse between multi-stakeholders to come in and learn about the topic while also helping people uh, build knowledge on how they should contribute to the topic in a way it is relevant for the Ghana community. Next slide, please. And because of all of these exciting activities in Africa, we saw a new community that was started in Libya in 2023. And this community is participating in the campaign for the second time this year to also uh, have that opportunity to use the campaign as a way of starting and building a community dedicated to promoting climate change and sustainability. And we saw um, a growing number of participation from the Francophone um, Africa, where we had some uh, good numbers from them who joined in the campaign, working with the um, Anglophone uh, Africa to also bring in their voice and their contribution. And then uh, there were also, um, these are also some of the numbers uh, referencing some of the um, stories and highlights I made in the previous slide that uh, would help you understand some of the results in numbers. Um, and this this is it. And this is some of the things we are seeing. Like Fuli said, the campaign is still ongoing and we are starting that by the time it closes for this edition, we're going to have more new stories and exciting uh, results uh, back to you. Really. Great. So now let's go ahead and like um, ask those of you who are there in the room and those of you that are online, we want to know what's your experience organizing in this space? We are assuming that if you are there in that session, in this session is because you have some experience organizing um, in this space. So um, please join us on Menti to reflect on the past of the campaign, on the activities that you have organized. So for those of you who are there in the session, uh, you have a QR code right there if you want to scan it with your phone. And I see some people that already putting their phones up. And if you're online, you can also take a picture of the QR code, or you can also use menti.com code 7503. 4228 um, to join. And I know that Anton, I think it's his name, or Anthony, thanks for facilitating the session. We'll share the link on the chat as well um, uh, of Event Yay. So please join us there. And now I'm going to pull out Menti, and you should be able to see like the answers as they are coming through. And hopefully, my internet doesn't fall. There we go. Perfect. Amazing. And I see that some of you are living hearts there. Um, so the first question that we have for all of you is like, have you ever organized an activity or campaign uh, around climate and sustainability topics? And I see there's like half and half. <laughs> Uh, 
and some people that is not really sure whether they have organized an activity or campaign. Great. So um, it's good for those of you that haven't organized an activity or campaign. I hope that this session inspires you to go ahead and uh, start um, with organizing around climate and sustainability in the Wikimedia movement. Now let's go ahead to the next one. Um, and this one is a, an open-ended response. Uh, so what did you learn uh, for those of you who have organized activities or campaigns around climate and sustainability? What did you learn from organizing the activity or campaign? And I'll give people a few minutes to respond. There we go. We'll see if we see a few responses already coming through. Great, I'm gonna like read a few responses out loud. It's a topic that resonates with a wide community. Actions are hard to do. Th talking about it is easy. Yes, my friend, that's in life in general. <laughs> uh, environmental issues are both global and local issues. Gaps of knowledge on the science of climate change so far have not organized, but it feels like I, we should, yes, Yes, you should, uh, totally. There is a big public and funders in the space. The how-to documents should be in multiple languages, not just English. You need a clear task, giving impact to many people. Public awareness is the most crucial part of it. Making sure that beneficiaries learn effectively is very important. Being responsible for every moment. People mostly translate articles from the English Wikipedia, People are hesitant to acknowledge the social justice implications of climate change, such as nationalism, ra racism, etc. Sometimes it's difficult as it is a very niche topic. People are still biased on the topic and make fractions which stay opposed to each other. Wikipedia has a lot of outreach and way more reads than an academic article. It's not just the science, but also the social issues associated with climate. Higher price award tax doesn't produce art quality articles. Newbies are good with improving existing articles. Capacity building is essential. All languages have limitations when translating. And campaigns can entice people to contribute through a greater sense of collective action. Amazing. <laughs> These are so many learnings from organizing in your community. Uh, thanks to all of you that have uh, shared. And now we want to understand what are your biggest barriers, sorry, what are your biggest barriers when organizing in the climate and sustainability topic? And the options here are the topic is hard to communicate to partners and allies. The topic is too broad. The topic is not well received in my community. I struggle with using tools for list building or in general for organizing, for example, like PetScan, et cetera. And you have like the option to strongly disagree or to strongly agree with some of the statements.
right there in the middle. I think that the topic, <laughs> the topic is not well received in my community. It's like probably the one that like people like are identifying less as a challenge, which is good to know that the topic is being well received in your community. Amazing. Let's move forward. And have you identified any other barriers that were not covered in the previous question? Um, so we want to know if there's like any other barrier that we didn't like really think about that you have already identified as being a problem in in your community. Amazing. I'm seeing like very good responses right here in the Menti. So thanks for everyone who's participating both in person and online. Um, I won't read all of this uh, just in the sake of time. So you can also have like an interesting group discussion, but it looks to me that you have a quite a good map of what are the obstacles and barriers that you have uh, identified in your organizing. And um, now, like, let's not focus only on the bad things. <laughs> so uh, the idea here is that for those of you who have experience in organizing, what has been your biggest success when organizing in the climate and sustainability topics? Like, what has been the, like, thing that you're more proud of? It doesn't need to be like, oh, we got, like, X amount of contributors. It can be something that you're really proud of. Um, that happened to you or to your community when organizing in the climate and sustainability topic? Filling the gap of having no articles about the sustainable development goals. Yay! Let's, let's like cheer that one. The interrelation with new and upcoming technology. I'm not sure I'm understanding that one, <laughs> but like let's, yay to that one. <laughs> um, then some of the articles we have edited have gotten high page views because of the news. Amazing. The participants acknowledge it, that not everyone is on the same page and they need to change communication strategies. That's a very good success. I love it. <laughs> New editors participating. Yay! Engaging with botanists from multiple countries, improving their knowledge of Wikidata so they can add it to their so they can add their knowledge to Wikidata. Yay! Getting more editors to find articles that need more research and kept keeping those editors focused on their local area to keep climate change at the top of mind. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, like I'm, I'm sharing the much excitement that I can. <laughs> Proud that some newbies have joined the movement through the campaign, especially young people, and then that we also got to learn new, new skills. Newcomers are excited about the theme in a way that is different than other topics. 
I hope that the person that wrote that is there in person and can share a little bit more about that because I'm super interested in learning more about that uh, sticky note. Amazing. So I think that the mentee will remain open. Um, now this is like my cue to hand it over to the group discussions. And so now uh, for those of you that are in person, the idea is that you'll be able to go into like some group discussions or have like, a, I don't know how many people you have there in the room. Um, Lucina and Alex uh, will be in charge, uh, sorry, Lucina, Alex and Ruby will be in charge with helping facilitate some of the discussions. And so the idea is that we'll have, and for those of you who are online, you can join us, not on the whiteboard, I'm sorry, uh, join us on the slides. <laughs> I'll need a minute to like fix that. Um, but Anton or Anthony, sorry about that, um, we'll share the link to these slides. And the idea is that you can edit these slides. I'll add a bunch of slides on the end so you can add your impressions. And then there, for those of you who are there in person, Lucina and Alex will help facilitate the conversation. And the idea is to focus more or less like 20 minutes in the present. Uh, sorry, you want to go ahead, Lucina, and explain this? You are... You saw me or you're feeling me because I want to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do I you come on, go. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> No, what I, we were thinking here is that perhaps because of time and because of people in the room, we can uh, go directly to the future, discuss the future. Nice. Yes, great. You are with the morning energy and, and I am with the afternoon energy, so we are going to try to. Uh, so the idea is to... The present, I think that the answers that all of you gave in the menti can help to think together how you are thinking right now this particular topic in your communities and what you think that it's going to be better to think for the future. So we want to, in particular, talk about three questions in the future. Can, can you go to the, the other slide? Great, thank you. Um, the idea is to make a group discussion or to you gave to us, give to us the, your feelings or your reflections about these three particular questions. The first one is related to what would you like to do in one year from now with organizing in the climate and sustainability space, thinking all the things that we shared before. Um, the other question is related what, with what do you think should be the role of the Wikimedia movement mm -hmm in the climate and sustainability organizing space. Uh, what's your vision for the future? Your vision, your group vision, your community vision, it's like what, where you are and where you want to be in the next few months. <laughs> and then uh, how do you see yourself collaborating with others in the movement to achieve this? There are some examples that you can take it, but it's going to be very good if you can discuss and then share with us. We have 20 minutes to do this. And when you have your reflection, ask to a microphone and Alex will give it. Thank you, Scan. Cool, amazing. Thanks, uh, Lucina. And then for those of you online, I'll start the slides on, on the feature section. Does anyone have any like aspirations or hopes? they would like uh, for the future of these topics? Okay, thank you so much. Um, for us in Africa, the, we got to know the Wiki from Human, human Rights through the foundation's uh, coordination. And we also learned that this year is going to be actually the last year where they are going to coordinate. So how do that uh, how do we sustain it ourselves as Africans? So I'm thinking that there could be a form of committee that can um, take up that work because it it's definitely needs some kind of coordination, bringing people together and trying to help and provide that kind of support because without that, it's kind of, it can sometimes make people feel isolated, like, okay, there's nothing happening. And I think one way that I think we can sustain it is to also like hand it over to some group of people. Maybe it can be rotating from time to time, but it should be a volunteer 
community that hands handles that. That's what I'm just thinking. Anyone, anyone else have uh, aspirations or hopes? Sorry, I have a very um, specific question about the last question. It yes. says. Can yes, Scan, can you go back to the last question? We, because we are seeing your editing workshop. Yeah, thanks, Scan. Uh, it says, how do you see yourself collaborating with others in the movement to achieve this? Which is this means here? Like, like um, making sure that the campaign continues? The or campaign and the networks that sustain the campaign can continue okay. or be... Okay. okay, so how to make the campaign sustainable? That's, yes. Okay. okay, let me think a little bit. Or, or the theme, right? Because maybe uh, okay. a campaign oh, yeah. is okay. not the, the right fit okay. for, for your community. Anyone else have aspirations, project ideas, hopes? Yeah, I can go. Um, so I think that would be... Um, I mean, I agree with... What's the name? Ruby, Ruby, sorry, Ruby. <laughs> I agree with Ruby that in order to sustain a campaign that is global, we need uh, some sort of coordination and uh, yeah, and also like local or regional coordination because the contexts are really different between, right? Um, so uh, I think that I would also go for that idea of I don't know if a committee or, I don't know, a more professionalized role uh, to sustain a campaign. Um, but also I would like to see in the future that, the camp that this campaign expands to other topics. Uh, I think that this topic is important, but also uh, after, I don't know, three, four, five uh, um, yeah, times, maybe it becomes repetitive also for the, for the community. So I would like to see how we can um, expand the topic or we can rethink the topic within other, um, because this topic is cross-cutting on another topic related to human rights. I don't know, I, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, uh, like uh, social things that also happen because of, of, as a consequence of the climate change happening. So I would like to see um, in one year, maybe a committee of coordination for the campaign, a more professional, professionalized role maybe for the campaign, and also how we're going to expand the topic in the future um, to keep people engaged and participating. That's my two cents. Thank you. I, I want to do a direct reaction to that, and then we have another person. I think something I loved about the campaign this year is people were talking about issues like poverty and uh, water and all these other things that the SDGs cover really well that weren't as tight to the topics that we were offering to folks. Um, so I, I love that idea of how do we make this sustainability a true umbrella topic and not feel very small uh, for folks. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I support you. That's very good what you said. I would like to have a higher person in charge. Um, and I would like to add another um, view as is how, with which kind of energy are our servers running? Do we buy new computers if there's need to or do we use, reuse old ones. Um, that I would like to implement in all the communities that they at least think about it before they do something. Um, it's not only about editing new articles, but to, uh, to keep the precious earth in the ground and not um, exploit our planet. So that that would be neat if we could implement this thought in the campaigns. Uh, who's next? <laughs> oh, who's next? We can give it back to Anna. <laughs> no, no, re responding to what you said. I was thinking that it would be also great to have um, beyond the campaign, and as you said, creating articles, maybe is the the time to start de develop 
been policies regarding climate change and the Wikimedia movement, right? Because we don't have any of that. Maybe we rely on the work of the affiliates. Some affiliates may have something. I think that European affiliates have this kind of policies, but it's not, uh, I mean, I haven't seen that in the movement yet. And as you're saying, um, this is crucial because of course we access to content that people, um, yeah, people uh, read and write and understand better what it's about climate change, but it's also about giving the example, um, right? So I think that this is this could also be another way of expanding the work that is already been done. Like, okay, let's think together, or let's put a group of people together that is interested in this are interested in this topic and maybe discuss, okay, how this can be, I mean, which are the policies that can, we need in the movement to comply with, right, this topic? Uh, I want to add a point related to um, sustainability as a concept in uh, organizing events related to climate, sustainability, or any other topic. Um, I think to, to, to have any project sustainable, it depends on engaging more people in this project, not just as normal contributors, but to make them feel they are responsible for this event. Like, um, I may call it negotiation, to, to make them have leadership rules in these projects. So if the, the current leaders uh, have any uh, personal issues, any uh, maybe... Um, difficulties to continue, they are newer ones that can continue because I, I see myself, many projects stopped at one point because the current leaders don't have time to, to continue. And um, we, we want to focus more on um, engagement in leadership in all our projects, maybe related to climate, sustainability or any other topic. Because this is, I think, what guarantee sustainability in any uh, project we, we, we lead. Anyone else? Thoughts? Hands? Aspirations? So one more thing again, our mission is the courses. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation developed a course on Wikilearn. I think that course should continue to continuously run again that if there are communities that think they are tailored courses that can help their local community it's good to build those courses on wikilearn so that people can take those courses because i think wikilearn is a very interesting platform that makes it easy but how many people know how to use the wikilearn there's also a gap that needs to be addressed so um yeah so that's just it great thank you i think that that we have uh, a lot of inputs about what we think that we need, what we have learned from the experiences of organizing campaign and also organizing other things or other topics through a campaign or through different ways of organizing activities, projects, etc. Um, I understand, and what Scan is they are writing is that we need to think beyond the campaign. I think that it's really important. We need to think beyond the campaign, and also we need to think in real time what are the topics that are urgent for the society that is, is thinking those topics. And uh, other thing that I think, and I have I saw in the chat that is emerging is guarantee different work methodologies to professionalize the way that we work in this kind of groups, networks, or, or I don't know, people doing something for something, yes? So I, I think that it's very important to um, generate a belonging to the way we want to work with these topics, climate change, human rights, or whatever, but we need to install that way of working and to sustain and that not only depend on one leader, the group is working on that. So thank you very much for all the things that you said. I think that it's very important to continue forward with the campaign and whatever will come with the campaign. Escan, are you there? Yep, I'm taking notes. notes. Yes. 
<laughs> we are seeing. <laughs> Do you want to say something? I mean, um, uh, not, not in particular. Um, I, I just want to encourage like people, I mean, like I always have something to say, right. But like, we know, it. you know me, um, <laughs> uh, but I, I, I want to ask people to, um, like focus a little bit more, not only on some of the things that, you know, we, we always have issues with like, there are gaps here, there are barriers here, there are obstacles here. I want to invite people to be like, kind of like saying, okay, so what happens if all those barriers are removed? Like, let's imagine that somehow like um, a wizard or someone comes here and solves all our barriers and gaps. Um, what we what what do we want to achieve uh, collectively? What do we think it's the role of the Wikimedia movement in the climate and sustainability organizing space? And what's our vision for the future? Like, what are the things that we want to achieve? Right. So, for example, on the notes that some of you put on the Mentimeter, you pointed out that like this topic attracts newcomers in a very different way. And so, for example. One vision for this could be that this topic help us renew leadership inside the Wikimedia movement, right? Like that could be our vision. So I want to invite people to like think, um, think more creatively uh, uh, and think a little bit more around like, what do you want to achieve by organizing in this space? Uh, what do you think is possible? Since no one's raising their hands, but raise your hands if you can. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm going to say something. Uh, yeah, one thing that I'm really excited about is that it's allowing us to see where youth are excited, and especially in sub-Saharan Africa, like the events about sustainability topics, people are raising their hands and going like, yes, this is here, right? And so I, I, I want us to be part of those like contemporary knowledge issues, uh, and, and sustainability seems like a really good place to talk in some contexts, and so that's exciting to me. Okay, sorry I'm talking too much, but um, again, the Wikimedia Foundation um, through various partners like the UN have been supporting the campaign. I don't know what happens now that the facilitation is not going to be happening at the end. What is the strategy and sustaining that kind of partnership? How are they going to continue to support the local communities in those kind of partnership and also they have also been instrumental in helping local communities to connect with big partners as well because sometimes our local communities are not registered yeah you know these are groups small groups and all that sometimes approaching bigger partners is kind of difficult and they play those kind of instrumental role what does the future look like what are the plans these are the things that sometimes i ask myself Anyone else have hopes or aspirations or visions? Yes. What? I think this is an answer for the foundation. It's a question for the foundation because I, I really don't know what. Um, yeah, I mean what comes next or if the foundation is going to keep supporting it or not, or I don't know. I, and I don't know if you have an answer. I don't want to play, <laughs> yeah, put you in a difficult place. <laughs> I'm already doing it, <laughs> but, Hi. but yeah. Uh, the mic was handed to me. Hi, I'm, I'm Ben Birschbaum, <laughs> Director of Community <laughs> Programs of the Foundation. Yeah, so I don't think we're here to answer uh, like these things definitively, but I think what, what happened during a, a few cycles of experimentation, you mentioned, Anna, that like, hey, maybe you could switch the theme, like <laughs> not always the climate human rights intersection. What, what started to happen was there was this real spark, in, especially in a few regions that we've heard about a lot today, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, and it started to become a really thing, interesting thing to kind of iterate upon and like kind of like look, you know, do some repeat investigations. And so what started to happen, especially in those two regions, but uh, elsewhere as well, like in Middle East, North Africa a bit, um, we're seeing real vibrant networks emerging. Um, like in Latin America, there's actually already a sort of a formalizing network of affiliates. Many of you are here. 
and are really thinking about how do we kind of, they've made it very much their own. They've localized it and really taken it in a very authentic local direction and are now thinking about the future. So there's this question about like the whole thing and then also these futures in specific spaces. Broadly speaking, the foundation is not the content director of the movement, obviously. There's a very bright line there. This was an area of experimentation about certain kinds of partners, like UN partners are coming to us, and we're like, uh, let's try to connect you with communities. That's how this all began, as you remember, Anna. Um, and we're also experimenting with and um, building tools to better support campaigns and organize. So there's a lot of reasons that was like, very useful and I think very enjoyable and fun to experiment around this. Longer term, I don't, we, we don't see it as the foundation's role to like, is, you know, run this global campaign on, on the topic. We do a lot of human rights oriented advocacy. So human rights uh, work will continue. And if there are efforts in the movement around content aspects of that, we should all talk and figure out how we can coordinate. What's now happened is there's these like climate and sustainability focused networks taking shape in different ways. So I think it's more a question of uh, not like is the foundation going to still organize all that or not. It's more like how do those regions start to figure out their future? Is there coordination globally needed? That's a legitimate question. And if it's not able to be provided by the foundation, let's figure out how to restructure that. And but one thing I want to just be very clear about is that we deeply value what has happened as a result of this experimentation. These networks and these campaigns and these projects are like incredibly powerful and important and they're like living things. So we really want to work with you. And I think we've had some conversations and we're going to have more in the coming months about how does this restructure into something that's more sustainable and community sustainable and community led, um, but with the right kinds of foundation support, like around partnerships you mentioned, Ruby, like we have people on staff who can help connect to partners in regions or a global level. That's always going to be something we can help with. Um, so yeah, it's, but, but we, it's, I think we became a little bit too expected to be like running this content campaign year to year. And that's not really our role. I think we probably agree, but, but you're right in saying, you can't just unplug, and, and that's not what we're doing. So we want to talk about how each region figures out its path and the ways that they need to stay coordinated globally. That's a really good question, and we need to, I think, explore that together and figure out how to help that capacity take shape. So that's my answer. Like, it's holding all the complexity, <laughs> but I think we could agree it is complex. But again, just want to say to everyone here who's participated in activities large and small, this has been very inspiring. And so we really value the work you've done on this. And I think it shows the way to how networks can form around topics um, and do this knowledge activism in a really effective way. So thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I'm also inspired, just echoing Ben, uh, Alex, another person at the foundation. I'm inspired about how this is bringing in new forms of leadership uh, in the communities. And I think we saw this in the gender gap as well, like new forms of leaders st stood up and said, now I can run things and organize things. And so part of it too is we wanna cultivate spaces like this more often. Um, and so how do, we, how do we not just do it on one topic, but more topics? Um, so that's something I'm always looking for. Yes. I think that these reflections, we need these reflections, we need these uncomfortable questions so because it's part of thinking how we are going to to build this new path but also understanding that we are the persons that run all these experiences and achievements and that we can set away we need this we think that we can do this and we think that this doesn't work so perhaps it's part of reflecting something that is bigger than the campaign and the content of the campaign it's a way of how we are going to work together and how we are going to create new, new ways to work and to maintain those ideas ongoing. Yeah, maybe echoing Lucina, I hear that there's like some frustration um, with the foundation. I mean, we always have opportunities to be frustrated at the foundation for some reason or the other. Um, but I, I wanna kind of go back to this question on what does the future look like? So I, I think this is like an important question that Ruby pointed out. And I want to invite everyone to think about what does the future look like? And I know that the foundation, it's, a, it's an important actor in shaping that future, but I, I want to invite people like to imagine like what that future looks like, even if the conditions are not great and the best. So that's kind of the idea of this exercise. Like provided that we had all the conditions, what do we, we imagine 
for the future? Um, that's kind of the, the question. Any more hands? Maybe to avoid the dependence on Wikimedia, the Wikimedia Foundation decisions, maybe we can inscribe the idea of uh, climate change in our uh, Wikimedia ADN. Uh, Anna said something about creating like a policies, but maybe we can create something non-official policy in Wikimedia projects. Uh, maybe to try to pass the idea or try pass the uh, um, the motivation to do something for the climate change in every kind of project, even if I'm, if we are working for something that sounds not non related with uh, climate change, maybe we can adopt like an, a general strategy among Wikimedians to ask us always like, how can I do something for climate change in this project, even in, when, when sounds quite weird or some, some, uh, strange, but maybe we can uh, uh, start to adding that, that ideas in our personal projects, in our community projects, and maybe to create a, a non-official non -official policy that maybe we can, we can convert it in the future as a, an official one. We have already some uh, ideas similar to that. For example, that happens to gender gap. It happens uh, with uh, non-discrimination policies. We already have that in our ADN. So maybe we can do something similar for climate change policies, in my opinion. Great, thank you, Salva. Can I just second that? Because when I edit Wikidata or Wikipedia, normally English Wikipedia, because unfortunately it's the only language I speak, um, <laughs> I do try, well, especially when I'm doing species articles, to add in uh, if the species is being threatened as a result of climate change or human actions, mm -hmm. I try and make sure, even though I'm concentrating on species, to make sure that there is something, so long as I've got a reference, of course, to be able to include that into that particular article. So I really um, second the commentators from this gentleman about it being something that you should continually think about when you're editing and making sure that you pay attention to the topic and then add it in as part of your daily practice. Yeah. Totally. Uh, kind of a saying in the climate movement is like, do what you can from where you are. Yeah. Uh, don't try to go somewhere else to do it, right? Um, and I think that's what's so inspiring about what we've done so far in these spaces, but everything from agriculture to literature to news to history to culture, like memory, living traditions, these are all affected by climate change. And so I think this is a really good direction to travel. Any other? So what I... Yeah, so what I'm hearing is like kind of modeling good edits, uh, like for, on the topic, right? Any other observations in the room? Any other observations we want to bring from online? I think Anthony had a, uh, a question that was in the, the breakout room. Yeah, actually, these are the questions that are on the chat. <laughs> the first one uh, was like, Africa is a developing continent and sustainability is a tech-oriented concept or goal. How was this concept introduced to the tribes in Africa who mostly have homegrown techniques for environment conservation? I think this was, this was the question maybe to Ruby. Yeah, yes. uh, Ruby, do you want to talk a bit about how the non-tech approach to sustainability? Yeah, do you want to Yes, I can repeat. I, I need a little clarity. Yeah, Still. Africa is a developing continent and the sustainability is a tech-oriented concept or goal. How was this concept introduced to their tribes in Africa who mostly have homegrown techniques for environment conservation? <laughs> Interesting question. Um, I would say that there are lots of ways that we need to think around it, and it, we need to think around local solutions. 
Um, because I think even when Wiki for Human Rights started in Africa, a lot of people like it was it sounded like a technical topic okay the topic itself is like so broad we don't even know where to start from but i think a lot of engagement helped them to have confidence in the campaign and to participate and again to go deeper we need to look at how that sounds to the local context and how we can develop local solutions that is the way i think around and like having to engage those communities and then understanding their issues, their challenges, and also addressing them accordingly. Yeah. Okay, and the last question from the chat was, uh, is there a, a link for the cause if we are interested? Yeah, so that Alex has played a main instrumental role in the development of the cause. So. Yeah, and we're, um, uh, I, there's a blog post I wrote a few years back uh, that kind of highlighted exactly what Ruby was saying, that like even though climate change is, seems like a global scientific issue, uh, actually when you dig into it just a little bit, it's actually extremely local and extremely contextual um, and often not at all about science. Um, and so you need to ask that question, like what does our community, what does our context need most from public knowledge in the context of a world in crisis? right? Um, whether it's climate change or biodiversity loss or pollution or any of the other sustainability issues. And so what does my context need and how do I address it? Um, well, I was very inspired by an EBO event this year that focused on poverty reduction. Their, their response to the climate crisis was actually there's a lot of poverty for people who read EBO. How can folks be informed about the issues involved in reducing poverty in the Igbo language. That's perfect. That's an excellent response to the climate crisis, right? Uh, because poverty is something that transcends the, the moment. That's a perfect response. Um, and so I'm, I'm wondering how do we get more of those perfect responses that creates knowledge locally in context? Right. I think that we're on time. So if, cool. if we want, <laughs> We can close. Can yeah, I great. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for uh, being part of this conversation. Um, I think that uh, like your input on the session has already been amazing. Um, and I think that uh, we have something to work from here um, on thinking more about how do we want this space to look in the future. So thank you everyone. And I hope that you enjoyed the rest of your time there in Wikimania. Um, See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.